Good morning, Kevin Bandy here from Possum Hollow in the Dry Creek community of Dowelltown, Tennessee. Wanted to uh, come again with another uh, devotional this morning. Uh, I do want to uh, uh, take just a moment to say thanks for everyone that has called and sent text messages and uh, for your prayers and uh, words of encouragement. Uh, I was diagnosed with shingles about a week ago and uh, you probably see them there on my forehead and uh, I've had family members uh, who have had shingles and I know, uh, know they uh, complain with pain and I'm here to attest that uh, they're very painful and I have a newfound uh, sympathy for folks that uh, suffer from shingles. This has been a rough week but uh, uh, the medicine that the doctors have prescribed is doing what they're supposed to do, and uh, I am some better. Uh, still hurting, still a little uncomfortable, but uh, but much, much better. And uh, I just want to say thanks for everyone who's uh, been praying for me and uh, sending words of encouragement. It's much appreciated. But I uh, want to look this morning at Matthew chapter 5 and verses 14 through 16 it says ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven you know, I was reading earlier in a commentary. It read that knowing the power of Christ in one's life is great, but it's even more powerful when it is shown. People need to see the benefits of serving Christ with their own eyes. It's hard to exaggerate the power for good that a thoroughly Christian family can exert. The whole community can see a husband and a wife loving and honoring one another, devoted and faithful to one another, and finding fulfillment in one another. They see children growing up in the security of a loving and disciplined home. They see a family not turned in on itself, but turned outward, friendly, welcoming, keeping an open home, seeking to get involved in the concerns of the community. You know, one Christian nurse in a hospital, one Christian teacher in a school, one Christian in a shop, in a factory, or in an office, we can all make a difference. Christians are a marked people. The world is watching. And God's way of changing the old society is to implant within it a new society with its different values, different standards, different joys, and different goals. Our hope is that the watching world will see these differences and find them attractive. As it says in Matthew 5 and 16, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. You know, sometimes we Christians underestimate the power of a dedicated minority. According to the American sociologist Robert Belair at the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton University, he says that we should not underestimate the significance of a small group of people who have a vision of a just and gentle world. The quality of a whole culture may be changed when only 2% of his people have a new vision. You know, that was the way of Jesus. He began with a small group of only 12 dedicated people. Within a few years, Roman officials complained that they were turning the world upside down. You know, there's a great need for dedicated Christian groups committed to one another, committed to a vision of justice, committed to Christ. Groups that will pray together, think together, 
formulate policies together and get to work together in the community. You know, the church could have an enormous influence for good in every nation on earth if it would commit itself totally to Christ. Let's look at Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. It says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. You know, I also read earlier in a commentary, it read that the gospel is not that God is going to make you rich or help you fulfill all of your dreams or give you perfect health. The difference between the one who knows and follows Jesus and the one who does not is not how amazing their life looks. The difference between the two is how you experience the storm. You know, I think it's noteworthy to mention that both houses experience the storm. Both the one who follows Jesus and the one who does not experience the same storm. The gospel is not that when you come to Jesus, life will get easier, that your problems will go away, no, sometimes it's quite the contrary. Often life gets harder and your problems multiply. After all, you are following a crucified Messiah who has told you to take up your cross and follow him. You know, John 15 and 20 said, Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. The writer writes, when I compare my life before Christ and after Christ, there is no comparison. The storms have been made much more severe afterwards. This could be because there is now an enemy bent on destroying me and destroying my faith in God. Or it could be because I am Christ's disciple now, and I will follow him even when he leads me into the storm. You know, the difference now is the foundation of the house. The difference between the one who knows and follows Jesus and the one who does not is not the worldly blessings, the health, the wealth, and worldly success. Christ's disciples are not marked by the fact that they get promotions at work and that they live disease-free. Nor is the difference that the one who knows and follows Jesus no longer has problems or faces difficulties while the rest of the world struggles. No the difference between the two is that when the storms come, the one who knows and follows Jesus, that person knows that when the storm passes, his house will be left standing. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, dear Lord. It's a wet, rainy day and overcast, but... You know, above those clouds, I know the sun is still shining. Dear Lord, like the scriptures that we read and the commentary that uh, was written, 
Dear Lord, uh, put your hand upon me and my family that we can shine, that we can be an example in the community of Christ-like people, a Christ-like family. Uh, dear Lord, we want to show our community, dear Lord, what it's like to be a child of God. Dear Lord, that uh, we might could win a lost person to you, dear Lord. Uh, dear Lord, we, we also want to be found rooted, dear Lord, on the rock. We want our foundation built upon the rock, dear Lord, because we know from your scriptures that uh, troubles come our way. Uh, these blasted shingles, dear Lord, disease. And uh, things like shingles, dear Lord, happen to Christian people. Uh, you know, it, uh, life is not easy every day. Uh, we're, we don't have a promise of, uh, of, of, of an easy path every day. But dear Lord, we know when the rain stops and the storms abate, dear Lord, that the sun will shine again. Dear Lord, and we know that our house... Built on that foundation, dear Lord, uh, of, of stone, of rock, dear Lord, that uh, will be standing when the storm passes. Dear Lord, once again, dear Lord, it's so important, dear Lord, that, uh, that we do, dear Lord, let our light shine, that, uh, that we be an example, dear Lord, on our work, uh, at our workplace, dear Lord, uh, whether it be at school or in the office or where it may be, dear Lord, that we let... Our Christian uh, light shine, dear Lord. Let others see us, dear Lord, uh, living a Christ-like life, uh, speaking with a Christ-like uh, uh, language and vocabulary, dear Lord, that we're talking, uh, you know, the right way, dear Lord, uh, whether we be angry or, or whatever, dear Lord, we just need to be talking and speaking Christ-like, uh, living a Christ-like life, dear Lord, that we can be an example to others. Dear Lord, we just come to you loving you this morning, uh, asking for your healing hand on these shingles, dear Lord, this morning. And dear Lord, I don't know what uh, those watching us this morning on YouTube, what they're enduring today, but dear Lord, I know I've got uh, friends and co-workers that have loved ones in the hospital. My mother-in-law's in the hospital this morning. Dear Lord, just put your healing hand on them, dear Lord. And dear Lord, above all, the worst sickness of all is sin. If there's somebody listening, dear Lord, that's got sin in their life that needs to uh, repent and turn their life over to you, dear Lord, we just pray that today is that day that they decide to do that before it's too late. Dear Lord, we uh, love you again this morning and ask all this in your precious son's name. Amen.